Hi guys. Um, <clears throat> there's an entire set of shaming tactics and language and I suppose a set of concepts <clears throat> that are used by women, almost exclusively by women, um, when they speak about men, um, specifically with reference to relationships. Um, this gyno speak, as I will henceforth refer to most things uttered by women and feminists, um, revolves around the concept of commitment. Now, uh, you've heard it basically everywhere. Uh, how often does one hear from the lips of a woman, he doesn't want to commit. Uh, he's a commitment phobe. Now, I'll get to that a little later, but uh, the whole concept of the commitment phobe uh, is fallacious, and it is a, uh, ex a female-exclusive form of shaming language. But um, before we get there, let's try to examine what exactly women mean in gyno speak when they talk about commitment, because we hear this all the time. And first off, when a woman says he doesn't want to commit, that is not a statement. It's not a neutral statement. It's not even really a negative statement. It's in fact a reproach. It's a reproach directed towards the man um, and it carries with it the idea that he is essentially doing something wrong. What exactly does it mean to commit, and what is commitment within the context of a relationship or marriage, oh, God forbid? Um, well, I think it's pretty clear that it requires translation and interpretation, because um, it's not really it doesn't it's not really uh, what it seems to be by commitment I believe at least um, in gyno speak women are referring to uh, a term or concept whereby the man essentially shackles himself to the woman and does her beat uh, her bidding now uh, commitment is much less commitment if I were to euphemistic uh, I think commitment is essentially a euphemistic term for uh, servility, and um, maybe I would go so far as to say slavery, a kind of domestic slavery. And the reason why I say that is because um, it's clear that when a woman speaks of commitment, she desires the man to subordinate his himself, his desires, and to submit to her wishes and desires, and to submit himself to her, whereby she is the priority in every respect. Um, that is really what commitment boils down to. And it should come as no surprise to anyone that when women speak of commitment and commitment folks, which I'll get to in a sec, um, it's, it really is exclusively in, in those terms that the idea that the man is there to serve her interests and those men who do not wish to do so are commitment folks. Um, Remember that in, in virtually every relationship, in modern times at least, uh, the man is in a servile position because he worships pussy and because he is a slave to the woman's wishes. Um, if he chooses to reject those wishes, i.e. Uh, break the so-called contract of commitment, he'll run into problems. Um, and you know, that's not good, right? Because then you have stress, you have a fight, and of course you will not get the coveted pussy, right? Remember the issue I've talked about before, about women using uh, sex to manipulate uh, men. But let's talk about the term commitment phobe. Now, it's very obvious that this is a shaming term, much uh, uh, of a similar uh, bent as, uh, I don't know, uh, calling a man a pussy or, or a loser or what have you because he can't get laid. Only this one's only used by women. Uh, why in gyno speech do they use this term? Well, the idea of the commitment phobe well, first off, uh, he's, he has a phobia, so he's afraid. Um, so there's the fear. It's a negative term. He's, he's fearful. And he doesn't want to uh, commit. He doesn't want to, um, to join in this wonderful uh, bonding and what have you. And, well, of course, the commitment phobe, it's claimed uh, by the vaginally endowed that... Uh, the reason why they don't want to commit usually is so they can have sex with multiple partners. And I suspect in very few cases this is actually the case. 
But all the so-called commitment phobes, including myself, friends of mine, whether they're men going their own way or not, at least in an active manner, um, they don't want to commit for a very different reason, for several different reasons. But I think the actual interpretation of the term commitment phobe is uh, probably closer to liberty lover or a freedom lover, someone who prizes his own freedom and his autonomy over that of subordination and self-abasement and self-imposed slavery towards the will of another, towards the will of the vaginally endowed. Um, the term is a shaming term and it's negative because um, that's how women, uh, well, and mangines and others, but essentially women, score points and uh, make men feel bad because men, in some cases, refuse to do their bidding and execute their will. And so the, com the commitment phobe, of course, is one su such man. He is someone who's cho chosen to go his own way, in the vast majority of cases, not so he can have sex with multiple partners, but simply because he values his freedom, his autonomy, and he doesn't want to subordinate himself to someone who has respect for none of those things, and also ex expects him to, uh, well, essentially um, live in semi-eternal servitude um, with regards to the woman's will and uh, her wishes. Well, that's, uh, so you create the idea of commitment phobia. She doesn't want to commit. Of course, there's the other element to that, and that's the expectation. The man is expected to commit. That is his obligation, his duty. Let's turn the tables here for a little bit, and let's consider the concept of uh, a, a female commitment phobe, but we don't use that term for a female, do we? No, when a woman doesn't want to be in a relationship or wants to go on her own, go it on her own, or you know, tackle the world on her own, she is a strong, independent woman, someone to be admired. When a man does that, he's a loner, a loser, and a commitment phobe. Um, so we see, of course, as usual, the um, the double standard, uh, and so it is the expectation put upon. Uh, men to engage in so-called commitment, and self-abasement and slavery towards the woman. So ultimately, uh, commitment is nothing else than uh, slavery. It is a form of subordination and total subordination. Um, remember, because the man's wishes in a relationship really don't count. Um, and they, are, will, they will always be superseded by the woman's wishes. Um, to the extent that the man can uh, fulfill the woman's wishes, she might throw him a bone or what have you, just like a dog, essentially, because that's how he's treated. And if not, he, sh she will punish him through various means. So, no, commitment phobia is uh, really just a, a term for men who you know, prize their freedom and their autonomy. And I, I would like to think, have respect for themselves. Um, and once again, we see this, this expectation. The man is, must do this. He's expected to do this. He's expected to commit. Uh, this is what he wants. Blah, 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 blah. And, uh, you know, you hear this all the time. And the man who seeks freedom is, is viewed as an, in a negative light. And I'll cite an example. Now, once again, uh, a while back, I was talking to an Internet acquaintance of mine, the same one that I mentioned in previous videos, mind you, and uh, sometimes we do have had uh, fairly lively debates uh, about the whole men's rights issue or men versus women society. And she's willing to concede that some injustice happens to men. But um, she just can't see the point. I mean, they have kind of given up with her anyway. But most importantly, um, she cited an example once of a, of a man who didn't want to commit. He talked about some guy at her workplace who said, you know, he told me he just want not specific reference to her, but in general, that he doesn't really want to be in a relationship because he just wants to enjoy his freedom. He wants to be alone, and it, and it was it was this was told in a disparaging terms, and of course in a negative context. He he just wants to be alone, and he doesn't he doesn't want to commit. He wants his freedom. In fact, she used the term freedom. Um, so, uh, and freedom, of course, is a negative thing, at least with regards to women that uh, the man who wishes uh, to maintain his freedom is seen as, uh, well, something negative. And of course, the reason why that is the case is fairly obvious and should be to everyone is that 
those who seek their freedom in the face of tyranny. And let us be honest that the rule, especially the, the, rom the romantic relationship rule of women, uh, and they, they do rule things, unfortunately. We are st so many men are still slaves to their base, pussy-chasing instincts. Um, it, it, freedom, freedom brings them away from that tyranny, and so uh, they, they want to shackle. Of course, they want to shackle the man, and the man who desires freedom won't let that happen. So, of course, we see a conflict, um, and this is why the shaming language is used. So, he's a commitment phobe, there's something wrong with him. Um, when are you going to settle down? You know, you hear this, there are all sorts, there are other variants of it as well. Um, but uh, I think we who are aware of these issues can be quite content in the fact that it's actually a compliment. Because the so-called commitment folk, the freedom lover, is someone who has more respect for himself uh, than the vast majority of, of men who decide to commit to enslave themselves voluntarily. Um, sometimes I'm to themselves, I suppose, but I don't know how much sympathy I have with them anymore. And um, and to really just go out, strike it out on his own, and you know, this is a good thing um, because men, contrary to, contrary to popular belief, and contrary to what uh, women claim in their gyno speak, men men are human beings as well, and uh, we have a, a, a right to assert our rights. Um, particularly in the face of the unjust, irrational, and absurd desires of women who wish to enslave us and uh, shackle us to their will. And uh, in more extreme cases, uh, ruin us. So, which usually is a result of the man resisting uh, her commands. Well, that's another issue. Anyway, I did want to talk about this because I think it's fairly important, this whole idea of the so-called commit, so commitment and then the shame language of, uh, of tagging someone a commitment phobe. Oh, he's a commitment phobe. He doesn't want to commit. It's a horrible thing. Not. It's not a horrible thing. It's a good thing. Because men who are aware of this and choose not to commit see um, in the cost-benefit analysis at the end of the day, never mind them prizing their own freedom, that committing is essentially uh, a suicide mission. Uh, and marriage, of course, is the greatest form of suicide mission. To knowingly, I mean, if you are suicidal, by all means, right? But to knowingly plunge yourself into a situation where uh, you're not going to get out and you're going to be destroyed in the process, uh, that's something any freedom-loving man will not do. So um, I guess I'd just say then, you know, fuck the women who use this shaming language. Fuck the manginas who concede to it and acquiesce to it. And, um, yeah, then we should all continue being commitment folks, because in my, to my mind it's a noble thing, the desire to uh, maintain your autonomy, keep up, keep up your freedom, and to resist what essentially is tyranny at the end of the day. It is the tyranny of the many, um, and I do mean many, many, many. And thanks for uh, listening.